Now, since we've initialized, we actually have to draw this onto the canvas, go into edit mode, and then press control N to delete any that I might have accidentally drawn. And uh, we're going to switch over to matcap gray for this. And uh, let's pick one area of the snake to focus on, the side tendrils right here. And let's just turn the visibility of all the others off. Uh, let's check our geometry level. We really want this to be at the highest level possible. In this case, if we hover over, we're at 4.5 uh, million polys for this grouping. If I look at one snake, I'm at 2.2 million for that. So a lot of detail, but, you know, it's pretty cool. So now this is my front view, and the key to this is actually... Uh, really basic. It's a brush that's going to give us all the most of the info that we need. And we can modify this as we want, but I'm going to keep this very simple uh, and just show you how uh, you can do it yourself. So we're going to select Scales Snake, double click that. That alpha does a lot of the work uh, for us. Now there are a lot of things that are responsible for this as well, uh, but in general most everything is really being done with the um, with the uh, the alpha itself. Tilt adds some impact to it, uh, but it's pretty nominal. So let's just start sculpting away on this uh, model. We're going to turn RGB off, and uh, we're just going to start adding form. Make sure that we're in. There we go. Now you want to keep the scale size, you know, relatively close to what it should be. And then just brush away on the model. So I'm going to just focus on this one part. And I'm not really worrying too much about where they connect. You might have uh worries, you might you might have to deal with stuff like that, but in this case I'm doing a concept piece, just piecing together what I think of Medusa, so it's it's much less relevant. When we get to the des the production phase of things, then I'll be concerned about that. Let's add a little bit more here. And then to get the back side of this uh, snake tendril, uh, we're going to load a custom brush. It's a brush that I developed, and I actually developed it for mechanical things. I call it the, it's a louver brush. So I'm going to load brush and navigate to it. So it's called louver grill B stroke, and what this does is lay down tileable alpha. Pretty sweet. Has some problems where it bends. That actually works for me though. And in this case, the intensity is a bit high, so I'm going to lower that. Once I've laid this down, then I can just switch over to the trim dynamic brush and just pat it down a bit. It helps to create some flatness and some unevenness. Still keeps, or should keep, the louvers. Uh, maybe I've got to lower my Z intensity slightly. Uh, but it's really nice for just kind of pat, patting this down. There we go. A lot more that we can do. Uh, to get this a little bit more realistic, we can come in with slash 2 brush. Where'd it go? Slash 2. And like I showed before, you can start to just carve away at this edge. Uh, but not necessary in this case. But if you need to, I would definitely recommend that you check out uh, slash 2. In fact, this is this is a lot of fun pulling that in. Okay, more tweaking to be done from there as well. Now the texturing phase of this is pretty cool as well. First you gotta 
choose you know is this a green snake is it a uh, you know orange brown uh, snake um, really dark black snake how are we working these uh, but in uh, most cases let's see I forget which one this one is uh, but let's choose this as kind of more of a rattlesnake um, color so I'm gonna go orangish brown really dark kind of neutral yeah let's pick there I'm gonna fill this with um, this color and uh, let's switch back over to standard brush I'm gonna press 1 that's my hotkey and uh, I'm also going to mask all the cavities of this so I'm gonna mask by cavity but before I do that I'm gonna set my intensity all the way to a hundred mask by cavity and if you turn flat on you'll see right away what it's done is mask all the separation between uh, the these forms these these areas where it's really recessed so I'm gonna go back to preview and uh, I'm gonna invert that and I'm also gonna turn view off so that the mask doesn't confuse me I'm gonna go slightly brighter spray color spray let's do that alpha 23 and make sure that color variant is 0 0.05 now make also sure that uh, Z add is off RGB is a little low and we should be able to add some color into that into those crevices we can go a little richer change our colors add a little bit of dimension but it's only going in the crevices we can invert that and make sure you turn view mask off and now we can select say this color and just by virtue of spray stroke having some color variant all we've got to do is just choose that same color go over the surface create a little bit more variant to it a little more options to it uh, let's go a little darker a little bit more saturated and then let's hit it here just see what we get I'm gonna lower that though lower the RGB intensity I just want to speckle it and a uh, pretty dramatic difference. Uh, I'm going to invert this, turn view mask on, and I want to pick that yellow. But I'm going to switch this over to a little bit less green. It started to get way too green. Pretty cool. Now, once you have that, clear this mask or let's keep it actually and uh, let's invert it view mask in fact I want to invert that and uh, what I want let's just see if it works out we're gonna go drag rectangle I'm gonna select this strange little alpha here invert it really dark red color and uh, RGB is on let's set that a little higher and I'm gonna drag out a stroke a pattern so strange alpha you could do this with a tribal pattern could be really fascinating to arrange um, I have another brush that's that, that uh, I like the alpha for so I'm gonna just load that in Uh, this one's called lock I believe mech lock yeah this is a pretty cool alpha I'm gonna change it so that RGB is on Z add is on and um, we're just going to drag out a nice pattern here I'm gonna clear my mask just so this is a little bit more visible and uh, there we go 
just make sure that these guys are quite dark. And on from there. Now, if we look at the finished model, uh, it's very intimidating. But the process that I showed you right here on this one snake tendril is the exact process. Let's load that uh, model in one last time and take another look at it. Now, if we zoom in, you can see these patterns are basically that brush with some cavity masking and in this case I used that uh, I forget what it's called but that drafters tool uh, whereas in other cases I used the mech lock to get that going and uh, here in the rattler which we are using for earrings here uh, used uh, mask by cavity to you know create this patterns which is just left there as a happy accident which is pretty cool um, one thing that's uh, we didn't quite talk about is this area here where I used a uh, gradient so if I show you that real quick it's uh, pretty powerful I'm gonna switch to alpha 23 and I'm gonna set the main color for this white click the secondary color and set it very dark darker than that select my main color again and uh, this will create a nice little gradient of tone uh, is if you turn gradient on we should select it let's go really white You should uh, experiment with this and watch how as you go over and over the surface it starts to morph and it creates its own variety because it's constantly gradiating back and forth uh, from one tone uh, to the next so pretty cool to experiment with and I think it works really nice as a as a necklace for her.